Hi everyone, Stefano here, Soto Zen channel. Welcome to this new video tutorial. I'm working on a 3D animated short and I have a character wearing clothes and I want to have these clothes to be simulated properly in Blender. So I'm diving into this huge new chapter. I made few tests and I watched a lot of tutorials out there. And I have to say that Blender seems to be able to handle close simulation very well. However, it's very easy to get lost if you don't know how to do it properly and especially how to organize all the modifiers that are involved in this kind of job. Because as soon as you try to do something more advanced than a cloth plane falling on Susan's head or the default cube, things become way more complicated. But in this video, I will show you a quite basic example that involves almost all what you need to know about clove simulation and character animation. I, for the purpose of this tutorial, I animated this cartoonist guy here. He's trying to jump up and fly away Superman style, but probably there was some kryptonite nearby because, well, it didn't end perfectly. Anyway, what we are going to do in this video is to create and attach a superhero cape to this animated character and then use the power of clove simulation to add some realistic animation to it. So let's get started. Here we are in Blender. I'm using the version 2.92 and you can see my uh, action. I know that Many details are missing, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I think it can be enough. So I create a new collection, name it Cape, and I'm going to uh, start this by creating the cloth object itself. So let's add a simple plane, and I want to isolate this selection. Uh, let me turn the screencast keys plugin here so you may uh, better follow what I'm doing. Yeah, because I'm working on the material preview mode, let's add a simple material to our object. I think uh, some Superman reddish color is perfect in this case. So let's give quickly a basic shape to this cape object. I want to scale it on the x-axis and then enter in edit mode I simply try to get the shape that I need. Let's extrude this edge here then we can select this face and inset the face, delete it and add some loop cut in order to add some resolution to our object. Remember that I'm doing this very quickly and fast. Of course, you can add more details if you need. So let me rotate it. Now what I need to do is to align this object, scale it and make this cape fit to the size of my character. I want his neck to to be contained into this hole here. Then with the smooth brush tool in sculpt mode I add some roundness to this cape nothing fancy, very, very simple. I don't want to add any kind of thickness at this point. We will do this later. If you see, I'm using F5 shortcut because I assigned the this uh, wireframe visualization option to the F5 shortcut. 
So when you see the wireframe appearing and disappearing on my blender, on, the, on my monitor, it's because I'm pressing F5 and you probably have to go and manually do it if you want to. I often use this option when I'm sculpting or assigning weight painting. I like to see the uh, wireframe of my mesh to better understand what I'm doing. So let's say that I'm happy with this object here. We can move on to the simulation process. So the first thing we have to do is to bind the cape object to the armature. So Ctrl P select automatic weight as option. And if we play now our animation, we have the cape that try to follow the action and the automatic weight process has done its best to assign some weight but as you can see no cloth simulation is involved yet and in this next step we are going to decide which part of the cape will be fully simulated by the cloth operator and in this case this collar area around the neck will stay still instead following only the character animation. And to do this, let's create a new vertex group that we can name Pinning Cloth because we are essentially telling Blender which vertices will be pinned to the armature in this case. Now in the weight paint with the brush set to one, let's just paint all this area that turns red because red means one, the maximum level. So all the red part won't be uh, influenced by the simulation later. So now I also use the blur tool to uh, create a smooth transition in the weight map. And it's time now to add the cloth operator. So just click on it on the physics panel. And if we play now our simulation, what we get is only this. We have our object falling down, attracted by the gravity force. So the first thing to do is to, under the shape uh, menu here, in the pin group, we want to select the vertex group that we just created. So just search for it, select, and then if we now play our simulation once again we have something more interesting let's go back to material preview and we can see that this part of the cape stay connected to our armature and the rest of the cape has some basic cloth simulation happening the next thing that we want to do is to under collision we want to turn on the self collision option and increase the quality step to something like six or eight. Now, depending on the scale of your character and dimension, you want probably to low down this distance uh, parameter in order to get a better simulation on your scene. You have to try different uh, values. Uh, but now what we are missing is that uh, the body of our character has to be a collision for this simulation. So let's click on this option and we can leave all these uh, default parameters as they are. So if we now play our simulation, we start to see something. We have the cape object falling down, following our uh, armature and also uh, colliding with the body. And as you probably guessed, the next step is also to set the ground object as collision object and now essentially we starting to get very near to the final result what we miss now is only uh, the tweaking of the stiffness and damping parameters or we can try to use some of the preset of the cloth preset the blender has already for us to try so let's try this uh, cotton setting, for example, and let's see what we have. 
uh, let me disable the subdivision surface modifier for my character in order to have a better frame rate feedback during the animation. So we're starting to have something, but we want to add some more details to our simulation. And in order to have more detail in the simulation, we need more density in our mesh. So what we can do now is to add a surface subdivision modifier to our cape object. What is important to understand here is that the position of this modifier in the stack is important. For example, if we want this subdivision level to be added to the cloth simulation, we have to move it before the cloth modifier. In fact, if we now play our simulation, you see that our cape object looks uh, way more smooth and behave more like a cloth object. And we can try the silk preset and see what happens. <laughs> and I get this funny result, the cape fall on his head and cover it. I like it, but let me add some frames to my timeline so the, uh, we have the time to let the cloth object to go to a rest position. Let's try 200 maybe. And don't forget that we still have to add some thickness to our object. So let's add a solidify modifier. We can check the even thickness and this high quality normals option here. And in order to work properly, also this modifier has to be placed before the cloth operator. And now if we play our simulation, we have the final result. So to recap what's happening here, we have our cape object that follows the armature modifier with automatic weights, then it's been subdivided by the second modifier, then a solidify creates some thickness, and finally this is simulated as a cloth object. But following the weight map painted to the pinning vertex group that we created, some vertices stay still and follow only the armature animation, while the rest of the object is actually cloth simulated. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and if so, leave a like and a comment and let me know what you think. Don't forget to visit also my main YouTube channel SotoZen, there's a lot of animation and cool stuff there to watch and if you didn't do it yet please subscribe also there as always i will provide this entire blender scene for my patrons so why don't you join my community and consider support and help me creating more of this kind of content in the future thanks so much for watching i had a lot of fun and i really hope to see you soon with another great video here on my channel have a great day stay safe and ciao